Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I appreciate very much the opportunity uh, to be here and to speak in front of such distinguished uh, audience. Uh, I decided uh, to focus my thank you so much, to focus my presentation um, more on the general uh, rules uh, pertaining to public emergency uh, in Poland rather than uh, on the specific uh, COVID-19 um, situation, uh, which I nevertheless um, will address. Uh, but first of all, I would like to present you a general overview uh, of the Polish regulation, uh, together with its historical perspective. Uh, I will um, discuss in, a bit, uh, in detail the types of emergency regimes uh, and uh, I will address the issue of the limitation of fundamental rights, uh, which was uh, so important uh, for the um, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and at the end, I will uh, try to make some conclusions. The Constitution of the Republic of uh, Poland, uh, which was adopted 25 years ago in 1997, uh, provides for special regulations um, which are applicable uh, if uh, proper functioning uh, of the state requires extraordinary measures. Uh, these extraordinary measures, um, this is the Polish term uh, for a public emergency uh, within the meaning of uh, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights or the European Convention on Human Rights. <coughs> Uh, according to the Constitution, uh, extraordinary measures can be introduced in situations of a particular danger and if ordinary constitutional measures are insufficient. And uh, their introduction results in temporary modification of the competences of public authorities, which normally uh, stem from the principle of the separation of powers, uh, the enforced position of the executive branch, uh, of course, uh, the curtailment of individual freedoms and rights, and um, in simplification of lawmaking procedures. The Polish Constitution uh, distinguishes three types of uh, public emergency. That is the martial law, the state of exception, and the state of natural disaster. Um, there is <coughs> certain gradation between them, uh, because the martial law is the state that allows for uh, most restrictive um, and far-reaching limitations uh, on fundamental rights, while the state of natural disaster is the least uh, burdensome regime. Um, beyond uh, the framework uh, of public emergency uh, is the state of war, uh, which is also regulated uh, in the Polish constitution, uh, but not within um, this legal framework uh, of extraordinary measures and public uh, emergency. And uh, a few words about uh, the history of uh, public emergency and extraordinary measures in Poland. Uh, as you can see next to this photo of this beautiful book, um, public emergency um, has already been known to the 1921 and 1935 constitutions uh, of the newly independent Polish state. Uh, it was also regulated in the communist constitutions uh, and directly uh, after the fall uh, of the communism, also in the provisional constitution of 1992. Uh, since uh, 1921, uh, extraordinary measures um, have been introduced several times in Poland. For example, in 1922, 1926, uh, 1939, uh, most recently in 2021. However, um, in the collective memory of the Polish nation uh, and the, the public discussion as well, uh, the notion of uh, public emergency and extraordinary measures uh, is almost exclusively uh, related and associated with the events uh, that took place in 1981. Uh, when the martial law was uh, introduced in Poland. And those of you who are uh, from Poland, I'm sure 
you recognize the photo on the right. This is uh, General uh, Jaruzelski um, declaring the state of martial law on 13th December 1981. And on the left, uh, there is a very famous photo uh, taken in Warsaw during the first days of martial law. Obviously, it presents a tank, uh, but less obviously, it also presents a cinema, um, which was showing at that time uh, the movie uh, by Francis Ford Coppola, uh, Apocalypse Now. Uh, of course, the movie is about the war in Vietnam, but um, the word apocalypse um, could as well um, refer uh, to, to the martial law in Poland, because the terror and um, the egregious abuses of human rights that took place during that time uh, were absolutely apocalyptic. <clears throat> and um, they make the present day discussion on public emergency a very sensitive one and loaded with emotions. And that is also one of the reasons uh, that the Polish constitution uh, regulates uh, this matter very cautiously and sets out several, pr several principles uh, which need to be observed while introducing extraordinary measures. And they are the principle of uh, exceptional nature and ultima ratio of extraordinary measures, uh, the principle of legality, uh, the principle of proportionality and the limitation of purpose, the principle of unchangeability of the constitution and electoral law, and finally, the rule of the continuity of the terms of office of elected offices. Uh, I described all of them in detail in the book. Uh, here I would like to draw your attention to the last one, that is to the rule of continuity, according to which during ex extraordinary measures and uh, within 90 days after um, the termination of public emergency, um, parliamentary elections, uh, elections to the organs of local government and presidential elections cannot be held and the term of office of these organs needs to be uh, prolonged. It adds uh, some very interesting political dimension to the discussion on uh, extraordinary measures and the possibility of declaring such public emergency. Uh, the three types of extraordinary measures are all uh, regulated at um, sub-constitutional level. Here you can see uh, three acts uh, on uh, extraordinary measures, all of them taken, uh, all of them adopted in 2002. And in addition, we also have uh, a fourth act um, relating to extraordinary measures, which allows uh, everyone uh, who suffered uh, material losses um, resulting from the limitations of freedoms and human rights uh, during the period of public emergency to claim compensation uh, from the state treasury. Uh, right now, uh, some legislative uh, work is in progress. Uh, most probably uh, during the next months, uh, we will have a new act uh, a new parliamentary regulation on the state of natural disaster. Mm, now let's uh, take a quick look at different types of extraordinary measures. Uh, on this slide, I'd try to uh, compare the martial law um, and the state of exception. Both of them uh, are not new institutions in the Polish legal order. Both of them uh, appeared already in the 1921 constitution. Uh, the martial law, uh, as I have already mentioned, is the most restrictive um, public emergency regime, which can be declared in case of external threats, acts of armed aggression against Poland, uh, or when uh, an obligation of common defense uh, arises from an international agreement. Um, by contrast, the state of exception relates more to domestic situations. Uh, it can be introduced, for example, as a response uh, to threats to the constitutional order uh, of Poland, to the security of its citizens, 
uh, or to public order. Both of them, martial law and the state of exception, uh, can be introduced on the entire territory of Poland or only on a part of it. There is an important uh, difference between the two uh, regimes. Uh, the constitution does not stipulate any um, limitation um, and as to the duration of martial law. And for the state of exception, uh, there, is, uh, there is such limitation. According to the constitution, a state of exception may be introduced for a maximum of 90 days and it can be prolonged once uh, for the maximum period of 60 days. As to the procedure of uh, the introduction um, of these two um, regimes, um, it's quite similar, if not identical. They are both uh, declared by the President uh, of the Republic of Poland at the request of the Council of Ministers. Uh, the presidential regulation uh, needs to be submitted to the same, uh, which is the lower chamber of the Polish Parliament, um, the president has 48 hours uh, after signing the regulation to submit it to the same, and the same may either approve uh, or reject uh, the regulation with a majority, with an absolute majority uh, of votes. And here we have a state of natural disaster, uh, which is uh, the youngest of all the extraordinary uh, regimes in Poland. Um, it appeared for the first time. Uh, in 1997 constitution, and it is not only the youngest, but also the least uh, burdensome of all the public emergency regimes. It can be declared uh, in order to prevent or to eliminate the consequences of a natural catastrophe or a technological uh, accident. It can be uh, activated on the entire territory of Poland or only in specific places where the natural disaster uh, effects uh, took place. Uh, it can be introduced for a maximum of 30 days uh, with a possible extension. The procedure of introduction of the state of natural dis um, disaster is different uh, from the martial law and um, the state of exception. Um, it is declared by the Council of Ministers and not by the President, and the same approval is not required, uh, only for the prolongation of the state of natural disaster, and needs the same approval. Yes, a very sensitive issue connected with the public emergency, as we all know, is the question of the limitation of um, fundamental rights and freedoms. Uh, the Polish constitution uh, regulates this issue in a very complex manner, uh, which uh, requires uh, reading together of uh, several provisions of the constitution. I will try to briefly outline just the idea uh, behind the constitutional regulation. Uh, so first of all, uh, in the constitution we have a general limitation clause, uh, which is uh, applicable uh, in normal situations to the entire catalogue of um, fundamental rights and freedoms, and it sets out uh, general rules which need, uh, which need to be observed um, while uh, putting restrictions on human rights. Most importantly, uh, it, um, it declares that any restriction uh, on uh, fundamental rights and freedoms cannot infringe the essence of the rights. Uh, so we can see that during uh, normal situations, the derogation of fundamental rights is not possible. Um, and the Constitution as well sets special rules uh, for the limitation of human rights during extraordinary measures, which allow, allow uh, for uh, more far-reaching restrictions uh, on human rights and the scope of restrictions um, depends on the type of um, s extraordinary measures. Um, in case of martial law and the state of exception, the constitution lists rights, most essential human rights, like the right to life, uh, prohibition of torture, freedom of conscience and religion, um, which can be limited, but only to the extent that is um, 
allowed by the general limitation clause applicable in normal situation. And as we remember, this general limitation clause provides for the uh, rule of non-interference uh, with the essence of rights. So these more, uh, most important, most essential fundamental rights are non-derogable even uh, during public emergency. In turn, all other rights can be limited proportionately to the degree of threat, uh, even to the extent of their derogation. And um, we had an excellent uh, presentation by Professor <laughs> Nora Biras about the difference between uh, limitation and uh, derogation. Um, so here you can see this difference and the importance of this uh, issue in practice. Um, during the state of natural disaster, um, the situation is somehow reverse uh, because the Constitution lists uh, rights, which can be said to be less important, um, um, which can be limited uh, to the extent of the derogation, uh, proportionately to the degree of threat. And these are, for example, the freedom of economic activity, the freedom of movement, uh, the right to strike or ownership rights. And all other rights um, during the state of natural disaster enjoy the status of absolute rights, of non-derogable rights. Uh, however, they also can be limited, uh, but uh, according to the general limitation clause and the rule of non-interference with the essence of rights. Uh, yes, so a few words about the uh, extraordinary measures uh, in practice. Uh, as I mentioned, um, in Poland, uh, extraordinary measures have been introduced uh, several times already. Uh, mainly during the interwar period. Um, after 1989, um, the possibility of um, declaring public emergency have, has been considered several times, mainly uh, in face of massive floods uh, that occurred and uh, reoccurred in Poland, um, for example, in 1997, 2001 and 2010. Uh, when the government uh, was also uh, was faced uh, with a dilemma whether to uh, introduce uh, public emergency. Uh, eventually, no uh, public emergency regime was triggered with relation to these uh, severe floods. Uh, such dilemma was also um, um, very visible during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, the government also was faced uh, with a question um, whether this, some kind of uh, public emergency regime should be activated. Uh, at the end of the day, um, there was no public emergency regime in force uh, during the pandemic. And the government um, um, decided rather to introduce restrictions and limitations uh, on fundamental rights uh, on the basis of already existing or newly adopted um, legislation uh, on infectious diseases. Uh, and it has led to the creation of a quasi-constitutional state of epidemic, uh, which was not one of the constitutional uh, emergency regimes. Uh, nevertheless, um, such far-reaching restrictions on fundamental rights uh, were adopted uh, that um, normally can be adopted only if one of the um, public emergency regimes uh, is in force. Uh, these restrictions, I guess, is, it was the same situation in every country um, related to the freedom of movement, uh, to the freedom of assembly, uh, or, uh, which was very important for the Polish people, um, the freedom of practicing, uh, publicly practicing um, religion. Uh, these restrictions uh, were imposed by means of a secondary legislation, that is by uh, ministerial regulation, um, while uh, the general limitation clause uh, which was applicable because no public emergency uh, regime was in force. So basically, COVID-19 pandemic in Poland from the constitutional point of view was a normal situation. Um, 
so all these restrictions uh, should have been imposed um, by statute, so by an act of parliament. Um, it happened otherwise, uh, so we may conclude uh, that these restrictions were not um, introduced, uh, were not entirely compatible with the constitution, and uh, such interpretation was also endorsed by the Polish uh, courts. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic um, sparked a nationwide uh, debate, um, also on constitutional matters, and uh, it turned out uh, that uh, Polish people are experts uh, in viruses and different kinds of vaccinations, but uh, uh, they are also experts uh, in constitution. Uh, so everyone was debating the question whether uh, there is uh, or there isn't an obligation for public authorities uh, to introduce public emergency. Uh, there were different opinions and uh, standpoints, um, um, let's say, represented. Uh, some of the commentators believe that uh, the constitution allows for um, but does not oblige um, the president or the council of ministers to introduce the public emergency. Uh, others believed uh, that the constitution uh, does impose uh, an obligation and if uh, the criteria um, that are specified in the constitution are fulfilled, um, the executive branch uh, is required, is supposed to introduce public emergency. Uh, indeed, the situation caused by COVID-19 um, um, fulfilled uh, the definition uh, of a natural disaster or a natural catastrophe and as such uh, it could have easily justified the introduction uh, of the state of natural disaster. Uh, but it did not happen. Uh, as I said, uh, this question about the obligation is uh, still an open one. Uh, but it's uh, worth um, mentioning that this uh, nationwide uh, constitutional debate uh, was also spiked by the fact um, that during the first year of COVID-19 pandemic, um, presidential elections um, were scheduled uh, in summer 2020. And uh, as you remember, according to the rule of continuity of uh, the terms of office, uh, if one of the public emergency regimes is in force, uh, elections uh, cannot be held and the terms of office uh, of the president needs to be prolonged. And many people believed in Poland uh, that uh, the government um, did not opt, did not trigger any public emergency uh, because, of the, because it might have feared um, the governing party or the incumbent president might have feared of losing electoral support if the elections are postponed. Um, and a very, very similar situation um, was also in 2010, um, where almost every criteria um, for um, introducing natural disaster, a state of natural disaster, uh, were fulfilled, uh, but it was ahead of the presidential ele elections and um, public emergency was not uh, activated. So to conclude in a few short points, the 1997 Polish constitution uh, provides for special regulation on public emergency, referred to in Poland as extraordinary measures. The constitution uh, distinguishes three types of extraordinary measures. These are the martial law, state of exception, and state of natural disaster. Uh, all of them uh, provide for a different scope, allow, allow for a different uh, scope of limitations on human rights, even to the extent uh, of the derogation of rights. However, we may also argue that um, the Polish regulation on public uh, emergency regimes uh, does not encourage its practical uh, application. There are several important questions uh, which are open. Um, for example, whether there is uh, an obligation for public authorities to introduce uh, extraordinary measures. Thank you very much for your attention.